Welcome to Sunday School for September 12, 2021. I do not own the rights to this music. The topic is from generation to generation. Today's Bible basis is found in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 10 through 15, and then verses 20 to 27. The Bible truth says, to live life to the fullest, we must make good choices and keep a righteous path. The memory verse says, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. And that's Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13. The lesson aim says, by the end of the lesson, we will explain how the teachings from the proverb promote wise living, consider living wisely and following a straight path, and develop a strategy for making good choices and living a godly life. Our lesson scripture, beginning at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Verse 20, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Years of your life will be many, Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Biblical definitions. Incline and perverse. Incline means to stretch out, extend, or offer. Perverse means deviant or crooked. The life need for today's lesson. That your students will compare the two paths of life. The introduction says, you must choose. The way of wisdom might be synonymous with the paths of righteousness, identified in Psalm 23, verse 3, but it is not an actual path or walkway. It's used as a metaphor for choosing a godly lifestyle. Everyone must choose. The Bible learning says that your students will identify the benefits and consequences of lifestyle choices. Two paths, two different outcomes. Simply put, Solomon taught that life is a two-way street and that his children could go to the right way, the way of wisdom, or in the wrong direction, the path of the wicked. Solomon allowed his children to choose by telling them in effect, I have led you in the right paths. The rest is up to you. Solomon taught his children by example and showed them how to hide God's word in their hearts, how to recognize ungodliness, and how to shun evil. Though he was not a perfect man, his children were witnesses to the blessings of God upon Solomon's life. Listen carefully. Verses 10 through 15. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, 
thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 10 begins with the admonition to hear or obey. There must be attentiveness and a willingness to appropriate what is taught. The consequence is that the life of the pupil shall be many, which means he or she will be given a long life. Beginning from verse 11, the father teacher gives additional reasons why his authority should be respected and the teaching followed. Solomon uses the image of a road to make a comparison as he explains the wisdom of his instruction. In verse 12, Solomon explains that living according to wisdom is like walking or running on a safe road, a road that is well defined. On this right path, the feet can tread on good surface and take a course that will be free of unnecessary obstacles. Progress will be certain. Thy steps shall not be straightened, means the journey will not encounter restraint, confinement, or rebuke. The implied opposite is that those who's, who walk in a troubled and uneven path are apt to stumble and fall. Likewise, those under the influence of sound biblical teachings ponder their paths and carefully examine circumstances as they occur. The fear of God leads them to act in an upright, honest manner. Thus, their way in business and life is clear. They are without fear of being tripped by unpredictable and seemingly insurmountable obstacles. The admonitions of verse 13 challenge us to urgent faithfulness. Not only is wisdom the means of making progress in life, it is life itself. Anything so essential must be enthusiastically maintained. The believer must not let go of the truths of God's words and must not allow God's words to go unheeded. Instruction refers to discipline, such as parental counsel. It is our duty to hold to the truth that God has revealed to us and to attend to the commandments that he has sent us. But it is also for our own soul's profit. Divine truth is not a luxury. It is a necessity for life. Verse 14 begins a command to avoid evil association, which is a source of mischief to everyone, but especially to the young who are more imitative and whose habits are undergoing development. Evil men are bloodthirsty, men of violence. The warning is to avoid evil ways and evil people by not starting on the wicked path of life. The rapid sequence of imperatives in verse 15 stresses the urgency of the matter. In addition, the expressions used continue the a comparison of lifestyle with traveling along a path only now the lifestyle to consider is evil. Phrases such as avoid it and pass not by it state in the strongest terms to get as far away from evil as possible, whether for the sake of worldly gain or through a desire to please others, never approach the pathway where you would not wish to be found. When God calls you into the eternal world, the serious purpose of our soul should be to shun every appearance of evil. Search the scriptures. Question one says, why might Solomon have used a path metaphor? Practice makes perfect. 
reviewing verses 20 through 27. To Solomon, it was not enough to tell his children to choose the way of wisdom and not give them practical tips on doing so. In these verses, he advised them to, one, guard their hearts, two, set a guard over their mouths, three, attend to what they see or look upon, and four, be considerate in all they do. In verse 20, Solomon's son is first advised to heed the wise words of the father. The word attend means to incline the ear attentively or listen. The restating of this phrase in the same verse underscores its importance. Verse 21 instructs the believer to guard wisdom in the heart, for it is the wellspring of life. The heart is the starting point of life's activities. It determines the course of life. Heart refers not to the physical organ, but to the mind and the entire personality of the individual. The capacity to live with joy and vigor ultimately comes from within and not from circumstances. The corrupt heart draws one down to the grave, but wisdom protects the heart from that corruption. John Flavel, in his book, Keeping the Heart, very wisely observed, the greatest difficulty in conversion is to win the heart to God. And the greatest difficulty after conversion is to keep the heart with God. The reason for heeding the instruction is that the Father's words of wisdom given in verse 22 are the means of life and health. The human condition, apart from God, is regarded as a condition of death or enfeebled by sickness. But obeying wise advice can restore the listener to life, health, and soundness. Wisdom does not automatically come to a person. In Hebrew, the verb to find used in verse 22 suggests a deliberate effort to get possession of and procure wisdom. The health that is promised in verse 22 is physical, emotional, and spiritual, the whole person. God's words being bring deliverance from the evils that harm and hinder life. Nothing preserves soul and body in a healthier state than when we keep before our eyes and carry in our hearts good doctrine. In verse 22, all, of, all their flesh implies the completeness of the restoration. It is not confined to one part, but pervades the whole body. The living stream issues from the physical heart in its normal, healthy condition to vitalize and nourish every part of the body. This truth also applies to spiritual things. The streams of spiritual life proceed from him to all the powers and faculties of the soul. We must therefore be vigilant about our treatment of wisdom. The Hebrew term for diligence is very emphatic. It means to set double guards such as those which provide high level security. This forcefulness of expression plainly implies how difficult it is to keep our hearts and how dangerous to neglect them. Care must be taken that the fountain not be stopped up or injured. We must be circumspect and careful with the thoughts we express. In verse 24, after the father challenges his son to store wisdom in his heart and watch over his heart with all diligence, he gives the son a series of instructions involving his mouth, eyes, and feet. Centuries later, Paul referred to our bodies as members of Christ that we can use either as instruments of righteousness or unrighteousness. 
The commands in Proverbs 4, verses 24 through 27, concerning our mouths, eyes, and feet, can be obeyed only when we are watching over our hearts with full vigilance. The heart works in tandem with the tongue and as such starts with it. As the source of life, the heart sends up the thoughts that the tongue expresses in words. Words flow out of the heart. A believer must avoid the words that swerve from truth and purity to lies, deceit, and wrong discourse of every kind. Instead, righteousness must control the tongue, and twisted and crooked speech must be shunned. The final exhortation returns to the imagery of the path. The idea is that one should not be distracted from the way of wisdom. Look straight before thee is an expression of unswerving directedness toward a goal. The person who does this pursues wisdom single-mindedly. They do not look to the right or the left to check out other options. They are not distracted by temptation to leave the correct path. The foolish person is always looking around for different objects of desire. As the story of John Bunyan in Pilgrim's Progress well illustrates, temptations lie on both sides of the way, requiring one to focus directly ahead and walk without deviating to either side, without even glancing at them. As the author of Proverbs often states, winking or squinted eyes are symptoms of unreliability and guile. The wise person will have an unswerving directness, but the fool is easily distracted. Verse 24 warns us not to allow our feet to take us down the wrong path. Proverbs speaks of the foolish as having feet that are quick to rush into evil. By contrast, the wise stay on the path of life, the path of righteousness. Proverbs 15 verse 21 says that a man of understanding keeps a straight course. By contrast, the foolish man follows paths that are crooked. Having feet that stay on the path of righteousness demonstrates a single-minded pursuit of wisdom. The word ponder means to make level, to weigh, and metaphorically, to consider or to deliberate. The sense is that one must consider undertakings well by examining them thoroughly beforehand and pondering whether they are right and proper. Proverbs 4 verse 27 is closely connected with and more fully explains verse, verses 25 and 26. As in verse 25, the gaze is to be concentrated. The feet are not to deflect nor turn aside to byways. Nothing is to be permitted to divert the believer from the right way. Neither adversity nor prosperity nor anything that can possess the power of temptation. The disciple must not allow anything to turn him or her aside from the path of virtue, honesty, and fair dealings in all matters of faith. Question two says, how does the body metaphor provide warnings for those who follow God? The Bible application says, your students will consider how society distracts us today. The pressure to keep up. The word pressure, when related to teenagers, is called peer pressure. But concerning adults, is called keeping up with the Joneses. Using peers as a benchmark for where one should be is dangerous and leads to other, evil, other evils. Keeping up with the Joneses has plagued African-American communities and many others with debt, depression, and fear. How can the church promote wisdom in all aspects of life? Is this more or less difficult in an uncertain economy? Students' responses, 
that your students will consider how the paths are represented today. Today, what seems right may not be right. Consider this scenario. Kim had gone to three stores looking for the colorful bracelets for her eight-year-old daughter. Destiny wanted for her birthday. When Kim and Destiny went into the fourth store, Destiny ran right to the bracelets. Mom, they're here. Kim snatched a couple of bags of bracelets and led her daughter to the counter. Praise the Lord, she told the cashier. Praise him, sister, the cashier responded. So you're a believer? Yes, ma'am. Well, you should know what these bracelets mean. Your daughter is too young to know. Girls her age like them because they're colorful and are cute animal shapes, but older girls give them to boys because the colors stand for certain sexual acts. I know it sounds crazy, but what is innocent today might mean meet me behind the bleachers tomorrow. What deceptive road signs can you find in our society? Dig a little deeper. It may be a good idea to begin each day with a plan and a prayer to guard our hearts against sin. But are planning and praying, but are we planning and praying enough? According to business analyst Roger Martin, even a strategic plan does not assure success because this discomfort is part of the process. When athletes who have failed to practice before a game pray for victory before a game but failed to practice beforehand because the coach was too hard, should they be surprised when they lose the game? Plans and prayer may fail to yield success if we stay in our comfort zone. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Apostle Paul reminds us to examine ourselves and avoid complacency. After honestly looking at ourselves in the mirror of God's word, how do we handle the discomfort that results from what we see? Instead of simply revising our plan for the day and spending more time in prayer, Richard Foster proposes the balanced use of the dis disciplines of life in the spirit. Meditation, prayer, fasting, and studying the word of God. These disciplines are not laws that yield the external righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, but sustain actions that facilitate the transformation of the heart. Practicing the disciplines opens us up experiencing a change of heart graciously awarded by God and to purifying our hearts. Scriptures for today's lesson. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 16 says, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 to 14 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it, of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand 
riches, and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her, all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 20 says, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Psalms 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1 says, Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 12, I wisdom dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 12 says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. John chapter 14 verse 15 says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 13, verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. God, we thank you for this lesson in the name of Jesus. Let your words be received in good ground, God. Help us to be students of your word. God, help us to always want to be in your presence day and night, God. Let us be those that blessed man, that blessed woman that studies your word day and night, God. In the name of Jesus, help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you look on us with your favor and your mercy, God. In the name of Jesus, give us a hunger and thirst for your word, for righteousness, for right living, God. In the name of Jesus, open up your word, Father. Help us to understand those mysteries, God. In the name of Jesus, give us an ear to hear and a heart that discerns, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.